Hi everyone, it's Jenny. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about puppy pose. So we do puppy pose generally in a lot of my vinyasa classes and then oftentimes in the Ashtanga classes I'll insert puppy pose as what I like to call a research pose prior to getting into the full Urdhva or the full backbend wheel pose. So puppy pose is this idea of almost like child's pose, taking the arms straight up past your ears and then dropping your chest down to the floor while you're kind of standing up and elevated hips above the knees. And the idea there is to create a nice soft curvature all the way through the upper back as we roll the shoulders down the back body with the arms lifted we're going to think about wrapping the shoulder blades down and forward in toward the front of the chest so we're going to take puppy pose and then i'm going to show a couple of variations in case puppy pose is problematic for your shoulders so let's head over to the mat so the first way that I learned puppy pose was from table pose. And then from here, walking the arms forward and just kind of dropping the chest downward. Now I do have my palms flat here on the moment or at the moment, just kind of pushing my hands into the floor and just kind of noticing that there's a ski slope from my tailbone all the way down through the crown of my head. Now, typically what we wanna have happen is because we're trying to access the upper back, your thoracic spine, we do want to take a simultaneous till to the tailbone under. So I'm going to do that again just so you can see. I've slid into puppy pose and then I'm going to tilt my tailbone down toward my heels and see if I can just bring this more into the upper back. So articulating more into the thoracic spine. So that way the lumbar spine doesn't have to do all the work. So that's one way to take puppy pose. Another way to take it might build a little bit more flexibility. Um, is to grip the front edge of your mat with your fists. So I actually have a strong hold of my hands onto my mat. I am gonna flip over my toes for support because from here I'm going to get into this by pushing my mat forward with my hands to bring my chest and my chin and my armpits really close to the floor. Now some of my students can actually touch down. For me it takes quite a while to actually get there. So what I end up doing is staying for quite a while in my personal practice just working on pushing with my hands the mat away and you know getting into the space where perhaps I have to walk my knees back a little bit further away from my body and then actively tilting my tailbone under as I wrap the shoulder blades around the front toward my chest. And this for me is pretty intense. So I tend to think that my shoulders are sort of tight. So for me, I really wanna stay here for quite a while, just letting gravity help assist with this action. But in this action, I am stabilizing, okay? I am stabilizing my shoulders because I'm not reaching my shoulders out of my shoulder girdle as I'm dropping my chest down. Instead, I'm actively drawing the shoulder blades down the back, pulling the shoulders back into the socket, and actively pushing the chest toward the floor, simultaneously trying to engage my upper back muscles. So that would build a lot of stability into the pose. Next thing I do wanna say about this puppy pose is that there's a few ways to exit out safely. When I was first introduced to puppy pose, I wasn't sure how to exit out of this um, with a safe precaution. So what I've had to learn over time is, say you're here and you're, you've been really deeply into puppy pose, I've had to learn to really tuck my tailbone under, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, and like a wave, squeeze the belly to come forward onto or into a sphinx pose. So essentially, you're waving through center, really tucking the tailbone, curving inward, and protecting your low back. So that way your low back doesn't get pinched as you're trying to move into and out of this puppy pose. So here's the next way to exit out. Again, from your core, entering into puppy pose. We've just been here for maybe 20 rounds of breath, just really succumbing, surrendering to gravity. Same sort of a thing, harness your pelvic floor, tuck in and start to round, round, round from the pelvis, walk the knees up and then make your way into your table pose. And then from this point, you might move the hips, maybe shake the head out a little bit because typically when the chin is trying to reach the floor, you do put a little bit more bend into the cervical spine, the neck, um, the neck vertebra, and we wanna just try to round into that, kind of rock it out a little bit. Okay, so that's the typical puppy pose shape that we would take. Um, in the traditional uh, Sanskrit terminology, this is anahata, anahatasana. So anahata is the heart. And anahatasana, easy seat with the heart. So we're 
physically trying to drive the heart to the floor. So here's an alternate variation. I have a lot of students who have shoulder limitations and shoulder issues and puppy pose just doesn't feel great. So one way to do this is to come into a table pose and then sit back into a child's pose, walking the arms forward very long and actively pushing the palms down into the floor. Now with this variation, I'm gonna do the same thing with my shoulder blades, pull the shoulders down into the back. So notice my, I did some sort of like a, a trap protraction forward and then I'm gonna pull the shoulder blades down and try to wrap the shoulder blades around toward my chest. And as I push my palms into the floor, this might be plenty of work. Maybe my shoulders are feeling, uh, really feeling this. Extra add-on, palm on top of palm, actively pushing the shoulder blades down and around, actively pushing the palms down into the floor. And of course, switching which palm is on top, maybe after five, maybe after 10 rounds of breath. Alternate add-ons, child's pose on the elbows, leaning back and getting into the shape where physically I have prayer hands behind the base of my neck. And I do have my elbows very close to my head. And in fact, I'm trying to squeeze my head with my arms so that way I can actively, once again, pull the shoulder blades down and around toward the front area of my chest. Last variation. Maybe you have blocks, maybe you do not. Maybe you have a couple of pillows that you can walk your elbows up to. We're gonna take that same sort of a shape. Just make sure your elbows are in fact on the blocks. And sometimes this takes a little bit of kind of shimmying into to make sure your elbows are positioned appropriately. Palms together, walk forward with those elbows, drop the head, drop the chest, and really work on this activation of the upper back, pulling the shoulder blades up and around toward the front of the chest. And just being right here to breathe, maybe for five, 10, 15, 20 rounds of breath. This is a little bit more of a restorative shape, mind you, but it does the job pretty well, actively getting into the shoulders. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's lesson on puppy pose and then the um, subsequent variations thereof. Please keep me posted on your progress and let me know how it goes.